I watched a YouTube video yesterday that said vlogging is dead. And uh, ironically, that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna vlog. But the caveat being, I'm gonna vlog 100% using my smartphone for a specific reason. And real quick, our destination is actually going to be to visit a Chrysler Jeep dealership because apparently Jeep is one of the few car manufacturers that has ridiculously high and overpriced vehicles that they ultimately are having a very hard time selling. But maybe not so much the Jeep Wrangler, but Jeep in general. And we're gonna talk about that. Speaking of expensive vehicles, check out this Ford Bronco Raptor with drive out tag from Louisiana. I bet you this thing costs at least $120,000. Now some people would say that spending 120 grand on a Ford Bronco or any vehicle for that matter is dumb. It's stupid. Hey, to each their own. Such a beautiful day out today, which is the reason why we vlog, is to get out and enjoy the world around us, the scenery, have a great time, bring you guys some new and hopefully exciting and engaging and entertaining content that you will enjoy. Now, I'd much rather be at the pool, but we have work to do. And uh, let's get started. All right, so today we are vlogging exclusively using our, my, I say our because I ordered two at the same time. I got myself and my wife new phones. We got Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultras. And they have some cool features that uh, have improved the uh, video capabilities and photo capabilities of these phones, which makes them possibly the ideal solution for a super simple and easy YouTube vlog setup. Maybe even not just YouTube, maybe uh, other platforms. Although I don't think people are vlogging on TikTok but in the shorter form content, which TikTok has now upped the limit to, I think, 10 minutes per video, per video reel, you could potentially get away with that. And a lot of the short videos that you see on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, sometimes take hours, if not days, weeks, or months to create for the content they're trying to bring. But more importantly is to see how capable this phone, this smartphone is because I'm gonna shoot exclusively, entirely in 4K today. Uh, I'm gonna shoot 4K 60 frames per second, which is the UHD setting. And uh, I do not have a gimbal or any other stabilizer besides the video stabilization that's built into this smartphone that I have enabled. And the reason being is that I think that the video stab stabilization features, technology upgrades on this Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra are amazing, but I wonder what their limitations are. And I think that it may come in the form of jittery, shaky movement, depending on how quickly I pan, which I will try not to do to reduce the likelihood of nauseating, sickness, and um, just making the video uh, almost uh, uh, unwatchable. Additionally, the audio, right now we are recording audio through a DJI mic, uh, a wireless microphone that you can see here on my shirt. Maybe from time to time, it'll just be through the phone's microphone audio without any upgrades or attachments or accessories or changes to it. But for the most part, it should be the DJI wireless mic. Um, can this smartphone replace all my other tech? Can it replace my GoPro Hero 11 Black? I think it's an 11 Black, which has amazing video stabilization, but it doesn't have the best battery, even with the endurance battery. And it tends to overheat pretty quickly with the 4K features turned on. Uh, and uh, the other thing is, is that it's just one extra thing I have to carry, I have to charge, and I can't upload directly from it, which is a perk from time to time. I'm fully capable of editing my videos. Uh, however, I prefer not to. Therefore, as much as I can make on my phone, for instance, my smartphone, this X23 Ultra, and then essentially create the movie in the phone and upload it directly, 
I could potentially do without my MacBook Air. I could do without Final Cut Pro. And uh, this could be a one-stop shop for a super simple, easy vlog setup content creation solution. Single source. Uh, last but not least, what was it? The So we went over the video stabilization. We went over the audio. We went over the fact that we can upload it directly. I think that might be about it. I think that might be about it. Oh, in comparison to my Sony ZV-1. So I have a Sony ZV-1, which I absolutely love. But again, if we're going to talk about poor battery life, then that one is probably the worst. And again, uh, unable to upload as well as if I had a Sony ZV-E10, I believe I could put a different lens on it and get a much wider focal length. Therefore, uh, a much better vlog setup. So, uh, but again, bulkier, more to carry, heavier. If the Samsung S23 Ultra can kind of check every single box, I would not be upset with that at all. Side note, I do have a case to five case on order with the lanyard attachment, which I'm hoping can even further simplify this so I don't have to continuously fumble with taking the S23 Ultra out of my pocket. I can just leave it uh, hanging on my neck and be ready to shoot as quickly and as easily as possible. Last but not least, we would need to test the uh, low light and nighttime shooting features, but I don't think we're gonna do that today. Um, but again, if this can be a one-stop simple solution to recording content, creating content and bringing it to you guys as quickly and easily as possible with also the highest quality, I would be very, very happy, very pleased, especially with the price point of this smartphone coming in at well over $1,000 for the 256 gig version, gigabyte storage. I was gonna opt for the 512 or even a one terabyte, but uh, when comparing my Samsung Galaxy S20 FE, I realized that internal storage and the additional uh, SD card that I had added to it, I was only using maxing out at like 180 gigs. So I felt 256 was good. And with this phone, it's a clean start and uh, I had nothing on it. So I have full 256 gigabyte of storage and I try to clean it and dump it pretty much every day. So every day I'm pretty much starting out with the maximum amount of storage capacity as possible. So I think I'll be good. And if not, I can always uh, make a file transfer with one of these Samsung SSD T7 externals for a little bit of extra space. But odds are I probably won't get that far and I probably won't record in 8K. So I don't really see that being an issue. And the competitor or the runner up to this was the possibility of getting an Apple iPhone. iPhone 14 Pro Max, I think is what they call it. Uh, and the only reason why I even considered it was because of Apple's uh, seemingly superior uh, camera and video and uh, internal processing, as well as its ability to connect through, uh, I think it's AirDrop with my MacBook to transfer files quickly and easily. Transferring files with a, an Android device, a Samsung SSD T7 and a MacBook, it's a workaround, but you can tell that they don't really like doing it. So I was trying to simplify it, but at the end of the day, I think you're either Apple or you're either Android or you're either PC. So me, myself, I am Android when it comes to smartphones. I am Apple when it comes to computers for my workflow and video editing, but I would actually be PC if it came down to like, you know, word processing and other business related uh, components that would require a PC to operate. But for what I do, I make the MacBook work and I've actually completely gone cold turkey and I don't use a PC anymore so that I can acclimate myself much better to the Mac OS X operating system, keyboard shortcuts and quirks and features. Needless to say, I'm very happy. Uh, and very happy with this two-year-old uh, MacBook Air M1 processor, cheapest one they had, eight gigs of RAM, uh, 256 gig hard drive, I believe. 
Uh, I got it on sale at Best Buy. It was, I think it was like 800 bucks at the time. And uh, I'm very pleased with it. It does have its limitations, but so far it hasn't prevented me from creating the content that I wanna make. Um, let me know what you guys think about this video. Let me know what you think about this Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. And again, if you wanna see some cars sitting on the lots, uh, see, maybe we'll even have some interviews, uh, one-on-ones with these dealers and these salespeople and some managers and some finance guys uh, and, and see what's, what's really going on. Let's get some boots on the ground, real world insider intel uh, and, and, and see what's happening with prices. All right, like I told you guys, uh, we're gonna be attempting this vlog setup today on this Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. We are now on our way to go check out some vehicles, but um, yeah, let me show you the current situation. Uh, spring break is spring breaking and uh, the traffic is trafficking as we are sitting here crawling along uh, 98 on our way to our first dealership to check out their inventory. Got a little bit of a history with this dealership, a little bit of a backstory that I'll tell you about when we get there, but we are in the Jeep. We are in the Jeep. The uh, currently one of the higher priced vehicles on the market. Granted, we bought this Jeep a little uh, under a year ago. Under a year ago. Under a year ago. We got it in, we probably got it in, no, we probably got it about a year. Uh, well, about, I think we got it in May. Probably about a year. Yeah. Um, and so uh, today their prices continue to climb and here on the Emerald Gulf Coast uh, we actually passed the little Jeep dealership that's, it's like a used Jeep dealership, but it's a high demand, highly sought after here. And the, what I didn't realize was there's this little duck thing that happens. This little, you, you've been ducked. Uh, and it's a, like a cult following uh, of these Jeeps. And, you know, here at the beach, and you'll see so much customization, uh, most of which you know, lifted, big wheels, big tires, uh, removing the doors, removing the roofs, all sorts of customization. And then, you know, when you drive by, you gotta, you gotta throw up the deuces on the steering wheel when you drive by. She can show you, you what, what it looks, you gotta do it. You gotta do it, so. Every time. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna test out this vlog setup. We're gonna go check out these cars, these trucks, these prices, these inventory levels are cars unaffordable are they too expensive do people not want to buy them or have the dealers and manufacturers shot themselves in the foot and now they're going to be sitting on this inventory and paying for this through the nose shot themselves in the gas pedal shot the themselves foot. in the gas pedal yes yes <laughs> good on michelle <laughs> yeah um we'll see we'll see I, I think it's going to be look it's going to be this one here i don't know if you guys can see but it's an M6. Now, granted, it's not a brand new M6. It's a pre-owned M6, but it has a, a drive-out tag on it. So people are buying vehicles. People are paying the money. The question is, how much did they pay? Or better yet, how much did they overpay? Look at that thing. Look at this. Wow. So apparently, there doesn't seem to be any issue with the uh, money flowing and the whole yacht game and the boat game going on because here at Crab Island, you can see these jokers got the money and they are spending it I can only imagine how much that one costs. But look, it's a full house today on a Friday, April 7th, oh, 2023. And That's unfortunately, we've got an accident here on the bridge. Looks really bad. And uh, that's gonna be fun. Ran the whole back end of that thing. Trying to get around that, coming back to come back. Uh, off of Okaloosa Island. You can see these folks here. They're standing outside the car. They got out of the car and they're just kind of sitting because nobody's going past. He's looking up there like, what's going on? Uh, this is this is that this is a downside to bridges. you know the bridge situation. There is an alternative to go around, but you know, some of these people aren't gonna be able to turn around at this point and then the amount of time it would take you to turn around and go all the way through Fort Walton and come back around through Niceville and then pay the toll. It's almost like you might as well just sit here and wait. So we're gonna check ways. We're gonna have to check ways on our way back to see if this is still a problem. 
You can see this guy here. He's trying to turn around. We'll see if, if this is still a problem. Because if it is, we'll just have to drive through Fort Walton and come through Niceville. Uh, but that, you know, unfortunately, uh, there's an R8. He just moved into our neighborhood. Um, uh, unfortunately, part of the problem is that bridge is dangerous because especially a day like today, Full House, Crab Island, uh, Destin Harbor, Choctahatchee Bay, it's just packed. Here's the worst part. There's the ambulance or a fire or somebody, oh, it's a fire somebody, it's not the ambulance, trying to get through the stop two lanes of traffic. But yeah, so the bridge, is, it throws you off because you'll get these tourists, like I wasn't recording at the time, but there was a little Acura RSX in front of us that about pulled into the side of this uh, Volkswagen, Volkswagen tur uh, uh, Tureg, or I can't remember the other big Volkswagen SUV. But uh, so there's the end of the traffic. That's how far it goes. Okay. But um, the problem is on the bridge, especially with the tourists, when they see so much activity on the water, they want to look. They want to look around. And you can see that that guy, he just like completely hammered that Joker. Uh, that truck had a trailer on it right the one that ran into yeah they were hauling, yeah. they were hauling pallets, they were hauling pallets. So, so if he has to stop it. quickly uh that's going to be even harder to do if somebody is rubbernecking in front of him looking at the water the speed limit on that bridge is like 30 or 35 for a reason most people don't realize that and uh odds are that that trailer the brakes on that trailer probably got so hot they didn't even stop and uh you see where we're at we got state patrol sitting here, ready to make that money. But uh, we're going to make our way to these car dealerships and report back in just a moment. And we can see here, we got a C8 drive out tag. C8, is that the convertible? I think that's the convertible. Uh, he's got his headset on. I think he might be like an air traffic controller or something. <laughs> Yeah, I can't see that one. It looked like a wide body charger, but it ain't. <laughs> it just had one fender flare on the front. All right, let's go check out this. We got an LC500, got a Challenger here. We got RCF. ILX, maybe. I'm not really too familiar with the Acura brand anymore. Mustang GT. We'll take a walk around here, see what they got, see what they got new, used. I'll tell you a little bit of backstory about this dealership. Now, so Gary Smith, so we got Tim Smith and Gary Smith. I wonder if they're brothers. We'll do a quick pan of the Jeep. Jeep looking, looking fresh, I ain't gonna lie. So we're rocking this S23 Ultra today for the vlog mode, video stabilization on. But we do have a little bit of an overcast day and my car guys and girls know what I mean when I say overcast makes the dark color vehicles look their best. Uh, and this one, when was the last time you watched this? We watched it two days ago. ago. Uh, so, uh, a little tire wet on it, not, not much, I need to go back through. How come you never put tire wet on the spare tire? <laughs> so uh, looking pretty good here. Uh, we will get to the Jeep soon when we get to the Jeep dealership. But let's just walk around here and uh, check out and see what they got here at this Honda dealership. I'm not a huge Honda fan. I mean, I had a, I had a 2021 Type R for a little bit just for fun. Um, but actually I sold it right at 600 miles when I broke it in. But all right, so we've got new cars and I'm not gonna lie guys, I thought this was an Accord. I thought this was an Accord. I don't know if you can tell in the video how big this is, but this is a Civic. Yeah, I miss the old 90s Civic. Little, this is a Civic. Weird little. I, well, a EG, a EG and an EJ Civic, my favorite. Maybe an EK hatch. But this is a 2023. So we got a 2023 Honda Civic. I don't know the trim levels anymore. Four door touring, so 1.5 liter turbo. I remember my first Honda Civic was a 1.5 liter single overhead cam it had like eight horsepower zero torque negative torque actually negative and uh this is a thirty-one thousand six hundred dollar vehicle after the msrp 
and the premium of the exterior color being uh, morning mist. Uh, it's a little dirty. Uh, it's all right. I don't know if I pay a premium for this color though. And we can see here that we've got, so we can see here that we got, uh, we got the paint protection, pinstripes, mud guards, wheel locks, trunk tray, nitrogen, market adjustment, first aid kit, all weather floor mats. So it's interesting how they uh, set these prices up because you would think, what's the reasoning behind this? Well, it's not in alphabetical order. Maybe it's in order of most expensive, but they hid the market adjustment in there. So, the, you know, it's not first, it's not last. They hid it in there. Uh, unlimited lifetime powertrain warranty. Uh, that's new. Unlimited lifetime powertrain warranty, $49,999. Of that $49,999, the majority of it's probably in that Well, you know, it's too. cool that they don't itemize it. So you don't know what you're really paying for the most here. You think it's cool. I think it's shady. I'm not saying it, it but I'm just saying, like, they don't hit you yeah. over the head and say, this is 4000 and yeah. the rest is 999 Yeah. So it makes you feel maybe a little bit better about what they're doing with the pricing. Okay, but at the end of the day, we've got one. All right. Let me just, uh, the way that the color is, is morning mist. So basically, let me just explain this to you. We are in Fort Walton, technically, right before we get to Mary Esther. And we're at a Honda dealership. This is not a, in my opinion, a huge volume dealership. Yet they have one, two, I, 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 they've got one brand new Honda Civic. But it looks like they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least 10 sedans. The rest being Accords, I think, based on these taillights, which they're not really growing on me. But uh, to be a small dealership, in my opinion, here uh, in Fort Walton and have this many new cars is somewhat of a sign. So here we are, we got this Honda Accord hybrid and let's just look at the price and see we're at 34,885. So here's the deal, 32,990 MSRP. And then you add in the fuel, full tank of gas, three year, 36, $550 reduction uh, of BSI equipped vehicle. So a, di a discount. Uh, destination handling, 1,095 brings you to 34,085, but we got to look over here and see that we are adding paint protection, which I don't think that that's going to be a ceramic coating, but I don't know for sure. We got a pinstripe, mud guards, wheel locks, trunk tray, nitrogen, market adjustment, again, hidden in there. First aid kit, all weather floor mats, unlimited lifetime powertrain warranty. I got to look into that. I didn't know that they were offering that. I wonder if that's through Honda or if it's through a third party, but it's 3094 So realistically, this car is actually going to be 37,000 uh, and almost 200. Let's call it 37,200 for this Honda Accord hybrid EXL with leather. So um, 37, I I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, if it didn't have the H on it, I don't know if I could tell you it was a Honda. This doesn't look like a Honda to me. This doesn't look like what Honda used to look like, but I also have my opinion that car manufacturers are almost like melding together in their looks and styling, uh, especially with the teams and the hiring uh, and, the, and the different positions that change in jobs. So as a designer may leave, uh, let's just say GM, and they go work for Honda, they're gonna take their inherent styling with them. And then that's how some of these vehicles start to look alike. They start to look similar. Black edition, Ridgeline. I don't know, sounds cool, but it's a Ridgeline. I'm not a Honda fanboy or anything like that. So like some of these things just don't really, they don't really jump out at me. I don't see the window stickers on these. So I'm gonna assume that these are pre-owned Ridgelines. Uh, and then we have this Accord here. It's kind of hard to tell what these, what these, the difference is in these cars. I don't think this one's a hybrid. So this one's a 1.5 liter T, I guess a 1.5 liter turbo, 30,155. Add the 
3094 on top of it and i'm just going to go over here this blue color kind of takes me back to the good old days of the uh electron blue pearl civic si uh, but this one is a 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport 33 445 plus 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 so you know you're at 36 and uh, almost 36 6 basically 36 6 I mean honestly I'm not gonna lie for okay this one's sold so no issue selling these at least not this one um, this one says PDI and final delivery checklist so this one's sold all right it's a cool color i think it's a cool color i like the color what do you guys think uh i don't know if it's a daily color for me but i like the color it reminds me may not pick up on the camera reminds me of uh one of my favorite bmw colors which is san marino blue i really like that color uh i think there's a dodge charger in that color similarly but for that price to buy a brand new Honda Accord in 2023 at $36,000, $37,000. And it comes with a lifetime powertrain warranty, which odds are you probably wouldn't really need it except for the transmission, which sometimes Accords have transmission issues. Maybe they got that worked out. Looks like we got the new delivery area over here. People picking up a Honda Civic. I like the, I like the color. Almost looks like a Nardo gray, black wheels. Um, so people are buying people are buying maybe honda is just not uh flying off the the lots like other brands you know honda's kind of boring you know honda's kind of basic and simple uh let's see what this one is this is a 2023 crv 34,860. add on the 4094 at least it's not just the market adjustment at least you get I'm honestly the paint protection again. I'm not sure if it's ceramic coating, so it may not be worth it. Pinstripes, I'd ask you to take them off. Mud guards, I'm not going off road. Wheel locks, ain't nobody still on these wheels. Trunk tray, I'll take it. Nitrogen, sounds cool, but until you need to refill it. Market adjustment, how much are they charging for that? First aid kit, worth about, I don't know, 15 bucks. Floor mats, all right, I'll take it. And unlimited lifetime powertrain warranty. Um, you know, even with the add on, this one's 4,094. Uh, I guess the discrepancy here is just how much this warrant, this powertrain warranty and this market adjustment really is. But um, even still to be able to buy a brand new vehicle uh, for under $40,000 and ultimately be one of the higher end models and essentially get all the bells and whistles, all the options and leather. I mean, maybe it's not so bad after all. Um, we got some used vehicles here. I'm just gonna take a look over here and see what it looks like with this Z71 Silverado. You guys comment down below, let me know how this is working out for you. I'm not running a gimbal or anything. This is just straight up video stabilization built in and this little tripod that you, this telescoping tripod. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that in the window, but it's just a little tripod and I can use it as a, as a, a stand or I can just hold it in my hand. And we got this 2022 Chevy Silverado 1500 RST with 16,000 miles on it. No price listed that I can see. So, you know, I'd have to go online and check and see what they're asking for it. But odds are um, the value is probably going to be, the value will probably be within the new, new cars instead of the used cars. Uh, I think, I, you know, again, I'm not a Honda fanboy. I haven't been following them that closely. Uh, but just from a quick glance, what they have available and the prices don't seem terrible to me. Because honestly, I told my wife, Michelle, the other day, 2021 Nissan Titan, 11,000 miles. I told her the other day, I said, for the most part, a vehicle starts 60, 70, really and truly. If you want something halfway decent, something good 60 70 and you know there's nothing wrong with these cars but i'm just saying like something cool something fun something desirable you know i don't think people are like parking these accords and looking back at them when they walk away you guys know when you got that cool car when you got that fun car that desirable car when you park it you got to look back at it 
like this F-150 right here, I would be willing to bet that whoever buys an F-150 trimmer, F-250 trimmer, doesn't matter. You're gonna look back at it. I think I, I think this falls into the cool category. Uh, I, I think it falls into the cool category. I have gripes with it for the fact that they charge you extra to make, they charge you extra for what should be standard. Whereas they've leveled the front from the factory. They put, uh, looks like, I don't know, almost 33s on it, uh, all terrains, uh, give you a beefier suspension off-road package. It should be standard and they charge you for it. But hey, this is, a, this is the world we live in. We got a used Accord or here, over here at Acura, or not Acura, next door. And again, I really like these colors. I like this color. I, actually, I like this shape and the style. To me, this still feels like a Honda look. Uh, the new Accord isn't quite, in my opinion, a Honda look right off the bat. We got a Tesla Model 3. I've never driven a Tesla before. I need to, I need to take a Tesla out for a test drive. I was asking, I was telling my wife, I was like, I wonder if a Model 3 performance can be fun. But without the exhaust sound and feel, I don't think it's really going to get me excited. We got some used pre-owned Acuras, some MDXs it looks like, 2022 certified, 2020, 2019. Uh, we got a Ranger over here. Never buy one, Ford Mustang GT. Uh, probably overpriced. I like the wheels though. These are top two on o OEM uh, Mustang wheels. And this one is the life cycle improvement on the front end. So yeah, I like those wheels. Uh, really, really nice E-Class. 2018 E-Class. Uh, probably a 63, let me guess. Let's see here. Oh, 43. They always throw me off. These 43s and 63s, they make them look so good. Uh, beautiful Lexus LC500, which is a very popular car here uh, that I've noticed at the beach. Uh, I think it gives you comfort, luxury, power, convertible, prestige. I don't know about that 10-speed transmission, though. I heard it's got like seven gears too many. Um... But it's all right, it's all right. I like the color. This one's got 57 miles on it. It's a 22 with 57 miles on it. That's, that's intriguing to me. Either somebody made a mistake in making this or they made a mistake in buying this or this is one of those, this is one of those deals that the dealerships, they, they run and they get somebody to buy something to get the allocation and then the dealership buys it from them so that they can have it. They'll pay them a little premium on top of it, but then the dealership has it, and then they'll pay, they'll charge you even more, but also add in the flexibility of the dealership. So the dealership, in my opinion, has changed the game on car sales because people don't wanna, they don't wanna do the private sale like they used to and deal with people, deal with Auto Trader, which sucks as a private seller. There's no way I would use Auto Trader anymore, it's terrible. Um, and the financing and trading component. Most people don't want to sell their vehicles, they want to trade them in, and most of them want to finance the next one, and then all the title work and paperwork and all that stuff. The dealerships have really taken over and taken control, much with the DMVs and the tag offices assisting with that by adding these new uh, title taxes in certain states. They've made it really advantageous for dealerships to do this, and uh, they've taken it away from the private sellers to have the availability and option to really uh, take advantage of being a private seller, which typically afforded buyers a better price, but also afforded sellers uh, a little bit more than what they would get on a trade-in. But we are here at Acura. Um, it looks like they have some new vehicles here. So let's walk over here. I don't know if these are MDXs or RDXs or what three-letter acronym they have given them now. We've got a used 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor. Uh, Buick, Nissan, maybe Versa or Sentra. Looks like an ES Lexus. So, so this one says this is a Tim Smith guaranteed lifetime powertrain warranty, nationwide, unlimited miles, 
no max term. So I guess this is uh, through the, the Acura dealership, not through the manufacturer, which when you think about it, for a dealership to add on this unlimited warranty uh, powertrain, it's a, it's a gamble. They're gonna charge you the upcharge on the on the window sticker, the non-automized window sticker that shows the the add-on prices, and then they're gonna they're gonna roll the dice on selling these quality vehicles that'll probably never have an issue with their powertrain, but you're paying for a powertrain, a, a unlimited lifetime powertrain warranty that they know you'll never use, or at the very least, one out of a hundred will use it and it's paid for itself a million times over with these dealerships so i'm gonna get i'm gonna guess these are new i'm gonna guess these are new and i forgot to check and see what they were so hang on one second let me see what vehicle this is this is an mdx which ironically i saw a commercial the other day for mdx and they said that you know it's like sport inspired I don't know about you guys, but when I think MDX, I do not think about sport and performance and speed and fun. I think about, I don't know, uh, a reliable uh, crossover sort of SUV uh, lifted station wagon, basically. But anyway, they got some new MDX. They got plenty of new MDXs. So either production's like really, really good or sales are really really low and people are not super interested in mdx's but this dealership actually came here months ago because they had a uh a gr supra that i was interested in buying or checking out and potentially buying and uh their price was about twelve thousand dollars too high uh for the market and uh they didn't want to budge at all. And uh, eventually they got rid of it because it's not here anymore. But I can say that uh, it sat on the lot for months and then saw price reductions. Uh, so I don't know if they necessarily make the greatest decisions here and choices on how to conduct business, how to negotiate with potential buyers. Uh, I, me personally, I would never let any anybody leave without catching their name and their phone number and, and their email but they were just like nah that's the price you don't know how the car market works and we're you know it is what i said dude you're charging a premium for a car with higher mileage multiple owners and i could go down the street to step one and get the same supra in a different color for 12 grand less with lower miles with one owner and uh he was like nah that's the way it is and then you know we just left that was it. it. I mean, shoot, it took us like 20 minutes to find somebody to even help us to get to that point. Um, long story short, I never got the Super. I did go test drive the other one at step one, and I was I was pleasantly surprised by the Supra, which is basically a BMW Z4. The power, the comfort, the transmission, the ZF. I was a little bummed out about a ZF, and I was like, you know what? I really prefer to have a DCT, but uh, it was actually really good shift quick stock exhaust sounded really good but at the end of the day the lack of functionality like it was impractical to the max and i'm talking about i used to have s2000s i used to have uh, a 78 or 987 cayman i'm talking about very very impractical vehicles the supra is quite possibly the most impractical like you can barely even fit your cell phone in there as far as the storage component goes there were some quirks with the radio and the sound quality and you know the steering wheel itself the steering wheel was very underwhelming it just wasn't anything like fun to look at for a fun car so ultimately i decided against it and uh we we're still venturing down the path of modifying and upgrading the porsche macan gts it's actually getting worked on right now uh, and when i get it back i'm going to do some upgrades to it do some power mods to it and uh, i'll keep you guys informed all right, so we took a quick drive uh, over next door. We're gonna check out Nissan. We're gonna check out Nissan. I didn't even realize that Nissan was right here. Uh, and uh, 
While we're at it, my wife said to mention that she thinks the new Nissan Pathfinders are absolutely horrendous, ugly, and don't look like Pathfinders. But I think that's just kind of where we are today, where what we once knew as car people growing up, if you were to then be introduced to a new vehicle today without any emblems on it, any markings, you probably wouldn't be able to tell what's what, unless it were American. I'm gonna say that for Japanese, it's kind of hard to tell, but for the American muscle cars, they pretty much hold true. But if someone plopped you down in front of a Mach-E Mustang, you'd, you'd never guess what that was. Sometimes I have gripes with how they name these vehicles, these manufacturers. I don't think that they should have called a Mach-E a Mustang at all. I don't think that they should call a, Ford, a new Ford F-150 Lightning a Lightning at all. And I don't think that they should call a new Toyota GR Supra a Supra at all. If anything, that car should have been called a Scion Turbo. Um, but either way, uh, we got a 2023 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum two-wheel drive. I'm assuming Platinum is the top of the line. And we're looking at, oh, oh, Stang. And we're looking at $51,140 $51, for a 2023 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. 3.5 liter uh, V6, six cylinder, 285 horsepower, nine speed automatic, um, up to 6,000 pound towing capacity. And this one is in, uh, what color is this? I don't know, if, I don't even know where they list the color on this one. I don't know if it even says, but um, it doesn't look like they're adding Let's see here, we got the base price of $47,970, options included by the manufacturer, $550 for the Platinum Captain's Chairs package, $210 for splash guards, $390 for crossbars, which I guess those are crossbars, $255 for floor mats, carpeted floor mats, it's expensive for floor mats. 345 for the cargo package it includes a cargo area protector cargo net cargo dividers console net first aid kit 395 for premium paint okay if you say so and 270 dollars credit seems for the tow package delete plus the destination charge that brings you to 51 140 but i don't see anywhere on here any any listing any additional dealer markups or added up uh, uh, sorry I stand corrected. <laughs> so 51, 140, and then we come over here and we can see that they add the permaplate, seven year exterior interior protection, and the nitrogen tire fill, bringing you up to 1220 add on, bringing you up to 52, 360. So, no mention of market adjustments or additional dealer markup of money going straight to the dealer. And I'm not saying that this is what they're doing, but I'd almost be willing to bet that this little permaplate seven year never happened. And that's just $1,095 going in their pocket. What do you guys think? Waiting to see if anybody files a claim that they'll then deny. But yeah, so the Pathfinders, you know, we're at 46, 945 for SL two wheel drive. And then after the uh, permaplate and all that other nonsense, we're at 48, 165. Got a little bit of a stark difference over here. Now, granted, we are comparing these SUVs to Honda Accords. I did not see any prices on the Acura MDXs. Um, looks like we got a few Frontiers. We got some Nissan Frontiers. And this one, this is a Pathfinder 2, even though I thought it was a Rogue. It looked kind of small. Maybe it's just because it's black. 43,830 for this two wheel drive Nissan Pathfinder. It looks like leather, but I think they look like, I think they might be vinyl uh, seats. They look kind of, see if you guys can see that, if y'all can see that, door's locked. They look like vinyl to me. I don't really know. Um, we got the Frontiers. I'm gonna guess, I don't know anything about these Frontiers, but I'm gonna guess a Frontier should be no more than $35,000. And here we are at 48,790. And this is a Pro 4X Crew Cab 4x4 V6 automatic, um, 310 horsepower. And then you add on the extras, it puts you at 50,010 bucks. 
and uh, there's no way you catch me spending fifty thousand dollars on this Nissan Frontier. Uh, I don't care if it's a Pro 4X or not. Let's see if this one is any more of a base SV. Now we're at forty thousand seven fifty, uh, forty one thousand nine seventy with the add-ons. I, I, I think thirty-five. I think thirty-five. I think thirty-five is a number for a Frontier. Maybe if I were to find the base model, the most base they offer, we can get to that point, 39,465. Uh, you can get the price by scanning the QR code, which I'm pretty sure they're using to retarget and track customers since there's no salespeople out here hounding me, which I appreciate. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. I see this guy coming over here. Uh, 40,485. So yeah, we're in the 40s, high 30s for a Nissan Frontier. A uh, little crazy, a little asinine, if you ask me. So I'm not 100% sure if Nissan has any, oh, there we go, we got some, we got some cars. We'll, we'll come back to these, we got these little rogues. Okay, that's the rogue, there's a Leaf. Let's just see real quick what a new Leaf costs. 38, 175 for a 2023 Nissan Leaf. And, we got some Titans over there. Now, this Rogue looks different. So these must be the new Rogues. That must have been an older Rogue. Huh. I don't know what that one is. I'll have to look at that one. That might be a Sentra. So we got these uh, Maximus. Four-door sports car. Quite possibly, you know, yeah. The most equal Nissan in comparison to Honda and then Accord. And we're at 46,680 for 2023 Platinum. 3.5 liter V6, 300 horsepower, 261 pound feet of torque. Probably very, very comfortable. Probably a really nice driving vehicle. We got what seems to be like some sort of diamond stitching on the leather, which is pretty cool. Up your game a little bit. 47,800 for that Platinum. And then we got an SR. I don't know, maybe the SR is more sporty. You know, uh, power's at the same level, but the price is 45, 440. Um, so considerably more expensive to get into a Maxima instead of a Honda Accord. Um, but again, maybe the Maxima is gonna be faster, uh, maybe a little bit nicer, depending on who you ask. This is an Altima. I think the shape is pretty good. The wheels are all right. Running Bridgestones, 236 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque. We're at 37,025. So they pretty much priced this at the price point of a Accord, and the Maxima uh, is priced above that. These must be Murano's, if I had to guess. And these Murano's are coming in at. 2023 Murano SV front wheel drive, 40,815. And then you add the extras, you have 42,035. And looks like we got a few Titans here. I don't know the different trim levels of the Titans. I don't think I'd ever buy a red truck. This doesn't seem right. At least not that red. I don't think I'd buy that red. So let's just see what this one is. This one's sitting on the street. This one's gonna catch everybody's eye. This is the one they want people to buy. 2023 Nissan Titan 5.6 liter V8 Platinum Reserve. Ooh, sounds fancy. 4x4 crew cab, 5.6 liter endurance V8, 400 horsepower, 413 pound-feet of torque, 68,155. And then we add the extras. I don't see a sticker for the extras. So maybe the, the Titans, maybe they're not adding any extras for the Titans. Uh, but 68 grand for a Titan? Ugh, whew. The markets have shifted. The markets have changed. No way I could do it. Uh, 68 grand for a Titan. I had a Titan. I don't remember what year it was. The first year a Titan came out, I think, is what the one I had. And it was a good truck. It was a nice truck. The brakes, you know, they had their issues. Uh, it was thirsty as all get out. And the carpet didn't really, it's like they, they skimped on the carpet. Um, they were trying to save money, so like they cut the carpet too short. 
it was really strange it's really odd but yeah uh that's it folks uh honda acura nissan new cars used car prices availability inventory we can see they're actually piling up these caught me off guard aria engage i didn't even i, I missed it the first pass i caught it out the corner of my eye on the second pass i'm going to assume that this is an ev I don't know anything about this vehicle, so I'm gonna have to go home and do some research. And you know, judging by the front grille or lack thereof, we're gonna say it's an EV for sure. There's no option for cooling. And this is a $44,735 vehicle. 2023 Nissan Aria Engage four wheel drive, I'm sorry, front wheel drive, up to 260 miles of range, 100% electric. 214 horsepower, 63 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery with liquid cooling. Nice interior, decent space. Um, I think the price is actually pretty fair considering. Um, I would be interested to know if there's storage underneath the front or if it's just for show um, for maximum functionality. Uh, but in my opinion, the biggest problem with the EVs, besides the cost to charge them, which is already going up, fifty-six thousand, whoo, fifty-seven, four thirty-five. So this must be the, this must be the Mac Daddy. Okay, two hundred eighty-nine miles of range. Whew, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I don't even know what this is, so I'm gonna have to do some research before I, I say anything about it. Uh, the biggest thing about these EVs is the fact that. I can't get the range. Like I want an EV to do at least 500. 600 would be better. And uh, I know we're, we're, we're advancing to that. Uh, but until then, uh, they just, they don't really interest me, especially for where I live and where I travel and the charging infrastructure in between is just not conducive to uh, EV ownership. Well, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we hit up Honda, we hit up Acura, we hit up Nissan, and we have to leave early and head back and prepare to sit in this traffic because we're not going to take the long way around. So unfortunately, we won't be able to hit the other dealerships today, but uh, I will be sure to get to the other dealerships as soon as possible. Ford, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Toyota, BMW, Mercedes, and I know for a fact, I think there's a Subaru dealership over here too. And this is just in Fort Walton. We can also go ahead and check out uh, whatever dealerships exist in Niceville, but I don't know if there's any new car dealerships, any franchise dealerships in Niceville, but we can check out Pensacola. Uh, we can also check out Panama City, Mobile, Alabama, uh, and so many others, especially this summer. Uh, and maybe that's what we'll do this summer. Maybe we'll just tr drive around the country checking out car dealerships. But I appreciate you guys watching. Please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll see you guys real soon. The most, not the lesser. Trash like the fuck of forty dollars in the club, and all let you got a thousand a popper pulling billets off the lot. So we fought through the traffic, trying to cross over the bridge over Crab Island, over. The bay over Destin Harbor. And according to Waze, it said that this was fastest, the fastest route to our destination, taking into consideration the wreck. So we're getting close here. I don't think they've completely cleared it as we merge down to one lane. But maybe we get a look here and see just how bad the damage is but yeah there's a bunch of boats out today on crab island and you know this is the part i was telling you guys about where people they want to oh, yeah, the cop is still up look at the over the bridge and see what's going on and see what's happening in the bay and they get distracted and that's when bad things happen i don't know if you guys can see this i'm holding it out the window so you can see the boats crab island 
Yeah, they do still have a cop up there. I can see the flashing lights. Ton of crab island boats. Got some cops on the water too. Got some flashing lights over there. They don't play. Well, let's see what we got here for this wreck. Some debris off to the side. Got a state trooper and the truck with the trailer and the pallets is still there. And that is it so maybe that's what i thought that's what i expected uh this truck is still here and that's what i expected because he's gonna need a specific type of tow truck or two to get his truck out of here and or the trailer the availability and how long it takes for that truck to reach here coming from wherever it's coming possibly Panama City Beach or even further. Um, I expected him to be left behind. And then hopefully that tow truck comes from the comes from the east and then it just cuts in here and, and ends up driving the wrong way to get to the bridge instead of trying to go the long way, make a U-turn and come back through traffic. But there you have it.